Alrighty y'all, uh, this is Connor Wardle back here with another reptile care video. Um, continuing on this uh, Mastoscopus trend, this is the third and final subspecies of Mastoscopus that I'm currently keeping. Um, like I said, I do hope to expand into other species um, whenever the time comes and I've got uh, the appropriate space for them um, to eventually uh, keep every Mastoscopus species and be able to produce these uh, for those of you that are interested in these species. So yeah, so the species we're going to talk about today is the, uh, the striped whip snake. Um, these guys are native to um, the, the west coast, so um, or I guess the, the western portion of the U.S. You'll see these guys in uh, eastern California, uh, Nevada, up north into Oregon, um, and Utah, and um, they've ranged down a little further south into I believe Arizona. I know they are in New Mexico and um, uh, Western Colorado. And then they do have a, a subspecies of the striped whip snake, which is the uh, Central Texas whip snake, uh, which is M T G R D. These guys are uh, striped whip snakes here. They are M, uh, I think it's like uh, Tenadius or something like that. Um, I guess Balmat is fine, just uh, pr pronouncing them is kind of uh, tough uh, with some of these guys that you don't really hear uh, as common in, uh, the, as commonly referred to in the hobby. Um, so anyway, cool. Uh, let's get into it. So um, we talked about their, uh, their range a little bit. Um, and then uh, let's talk about the habitat. So the habitat these guys um, live in is... Uh, it's uh, like a desert scrubland, um, a little bit more uh, of a temperate scrubland type thing than a, opposed to a uh, full desert uh, scrubland. Um, they're going to be found where there's going to be some bushes, um, a nice like topsoil sand mix, something like that, um, that type of habitat. Um, they're often found around, around um, like creek sides or ponds, um, just where there's some sort of a uh, water source where they will prey on amphibians, birds, uh, small rodents, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, uh, similar to Kochips, which is what I talked about in the last video, they've got these big mascophis eyes um, that they use to uh, periscope. These guys are often found um, on rock cuts or, uh, like I said, tree branches or something like that. And they'll, they'll be looking around uh, using those big uh, raptor-like mascopus eyes to um, lo locate their prey. Um, pretty much uh, similar to Coach Whips and any other mascopus, uh, these guys are going to be uh, eating anything that they can overpower. Um, I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, any type of amphibian, lizard, other snake, uh, small rodent, bird, um, whatever that may be. Uh, pretty much whatever they can fit in their mouth and eat. Um, there's a really cool photo on iNaturalist that I found um, where uh, one of these was actually carrying off a, a, a sub-adult chuck wallow, which is pretty neat to see. Um, I'm not sure if it got it down all the way or not, but it was a cool, um, neat, uh, definitely a neat uh, thing to witness for whoever photographed that picture. But yeah, so let's transition into captive care of these guys. So um, being from kind of a more of a... Uh, not exactly desert environment, um, semi, um, semi temperate, I guess, ish, uh, but kind of between like a temperate and desert uh, environment. Um, these guys, uh, I keep them, uh, well, I keep this uh, one male here on a, a mix of topsoil and sand. It's about a 70% topsoil to 30% sand ratio, uh, something that I just went ahead and tried. Um, they can be kept just fine on Aspen, uh, nothing nothing too crazy uh, with Aspen, um, and that, that works just fine. I just wanted to go for a semi-bioactive, um, just pretty much just a planted uh, enclosure with some kind of native plant, so I wanted to try that out and uh, see how that works. And it seems to be working so far, it seems to be doing good, um, no real issues. Um, it kind of comes out a little bit more because uh, there's more foliage there for him to uh, kind of hide in. Um, as far as prey goes in captivity, um, this guy is pretty solid rodent feeder right now. Uh, I would not recommend these guys as a beginner level species just because they can be picky. Um, being whip snakes, um, I mean, they, they are pickier feeders, feeders in captivity. 
Um, they're used to in the wild preying on whatever lizard species is in their area. Um, and it's kind of tough to source uh, lizards often, or uh, very often, um, especially some of the uh, different uh, desert species that we have here in the U.S. Um, they're not as common in the hobby, um, so it's kind of tough to um, be able to uh, um, have those ready at a, a kind of cost-effective, um, in some sort of cost-effective way. Um, so, um, whenever I first got this guy in, um, he wouldn't eat rodents at all. I tried lizard scenting, that didn't work. Um, I talked about it in the other videos, just blend up some lizards and kind of coat it in the lizard mush. Um, you can hear more about that in the coach whip video, um, as far as scenting goes. Um, so, he didn't eat lizard, lizard scented anything. He didn't eat lizards here. He didn't eat uh, live rodents or frozen thawed rodents at first. Um, so, I went ahead and uh, went to a uh, an aquarium store, found some button quail, and threw in some live button quail, and he would eat those uh, semi-regularly. Uh, unfortunately, um, the uh, the aquarium store uh, ran out of button quail, and their source uh, quit producing those. So, um, I was kind of forced to put this guy down into brumation, um, and then as soon as I popped him out of brumation in uh, early March, uh, I went ahead and um, just threw in a frozen thawed uh, adult mouse just to see what would happen. And uh, he took it uh, without uh, much hesitation at all. Um, so he's been uh, consistently post brumation, consistently feeding on frozen thawed adult mice. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I would uh, normally offer kind of a bit more varied prey items, um, but with this guy being a little bit more. Um, I guess temperamental as far as uh, what it, what he's feeding on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick him just to rodents because um, that works and that's uh, most accessible for me. Uh, but yeah, and I he's not super fat or anything like that, so I don't see any issues uh, with feeding rodents um, for the the rest of his life uh, with me in my care. Um, yeah. So, um, as far as temps go, uh, nothing super special. I keep this guy at 82 degrees, just like the rest of my colubrids. Um, I do provide a UVB bulb like I do with the rest of my Mascopus species, um, just to get them kind of uh, a little bit more active up in the canopy there, basking um, and enjoying, um, I guess, being a little bit more uh, of a display species than anything. Um, to my comment, I guess, with the display species, these guys, uh, while this guy seems to be doing just fine and chill and hanging out, um, I would not recommend these guys if you want a Hannibal species. If you want a Hannibal species, go more for like a Western Coach Whip or um, uh, just any of the Lampropeltos or Pantherophis species. Uh, a lot of your rat snakes, North American rat snakes, are going to be awesome handlers. Um, but whip snakes, in my experience, are a little bit more uh, high strung. Um, whenever I first get, got this guy, um, he would pretty much just come out of the box just biting me and nipping me and nailing me and all that. Um, since I've gotten him through quarantine and into a display tank, he's been a little bit more, um, I guess he's, he's been less high strung. Um, and he hasn't uh, been as nippy, um, but there's always a case for that, uh, being a, uh, a, a whip snake. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, as far as humidity goes, I don't provide uh, ambient humidity. Well, I don't provide... A, a shed box unless there's a patchy or shed. Um, he's been doing pretty good uh, providing full sheds um, without the need for a shed box. Um, so I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't recommend uh, putting it. Well, I mean you can put in a shed box if you would like, but I wouldn't recommend trying to get a uh, an ambient or a specific um, percentage of humidity for the entire tank. Being a uh, semi desert species. Um, these guys um, don't really have high humidity where they where they're from, um, so I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to achieve a humidity level inside the cage. If it does have a patchier shed, uh, I would go ahead and toss in a shed box. Um, so that way, uh, there's no uh, if, if there's like a buildup in humidity, similar to uh, Transpecos rat snakes, um, these guys can get um, a respiratory infection from that. Um, so I try and minimize that just by providing shed boxes if there is uh, a need for it. Um, but so far, ambient humidity uh, just in my room is uh, enough for this guy here. <clears throat> uh, as far as just uh, any other notes that I have for this species, 
Um, they're quite variable as far as their coloration within their range. Some of them are kind of paler, paler. some of them are brighter. Uh, oh, this guy is kind of going into shed a little bit, sorry um, for that little uh, jolt there, whatever. Um, but this guy's a little bit paler right now going into shed. Um, he's had quite a few good meals uh, in between his last shed and looking pretty, uh, pretty plump right now. Um, but you guys can kind of see here, um, he's got that nice uh, yellow, yellow up here. And that nice brown hue is kind of transitions to a kind of more silver metallic look here on the, the uh, tail here that kind of reminds me of some of those nice metallic bears rat snakes. And then on the belly here, uh, there's this nice pink coloration here that transitions back into that yellow belly uh, and uh, white chin here at the face, which is pretty neat. Uh, I really enjoy keeping this guy. Um, not very common at all. I found it at a NARBC Expo last fall, the fall of uh, 2021. Um, that would have been, um, but I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that don't pop up super common. Uh, if you want one, you pretty much have to go collect one yourself. I am in search of them uh, for a female. Uh, if any one of you, if any of my viewers, uh, live in their native ranges, um, I would really appreciate you getting in contact with me if you do come across a, uh, female, um, just so I can eventually provide these guys as uh, captive bred animals into the hobby. Um... Yeah, and like I said, they're not they're not beginner species. Uh, typically, more of a display species than anything. Uh, but they do make nice captives if you have kept other mascophis species in the past. Uh, I really enjoy keeping this guy, uh, especially in the the current setup that I've got him in. If you guys check out my Instagram page uh, at Connor underscore Wardle, just the same way that it's spelled here on the YouTube page, uh, you'll be able to see um, his setup and uh, what I do what I do for him. Got some cool video, feeding videos on there as well, uh, which is kind of neat to see. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment here or shoot me a DM on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm a pretty approachable guy, or I at least uh, hope to be a, an approachable guy. I want to help you guys learn uh, more about the species that I keep. And like I say with every video, I don't claim to be an expert uh, in any species that I work with, I'm uh, kind of a younger guy in the hobby, still working things out, uh, but I just want to share uh, what what works for me um, and just my experience with these species here um, to hopefully uh, kind of provide uh, some more uh, helpful insight on some of these species that don't have a lot of uh, literature out there as far as uh, captive keeping. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on Friday. So, yeah.